Hey, algebra students, how you doing? So the other day, I was, uh, I was doing some calculations, and uh, I calculated the, uh, the square root of 2, or I, I estimated it in a decimal form, and I got 1.4142135622, yada, 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 okay? And then uh, I was also doing something with the square root of 8, and I got 2.82842712, yada, 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 And I'm looking at those two numbers, and I'm saying, hey, there's a relationship there. This one appears to be exactly twice as big as this one. Why is that true? In other words, it appears that the square root of 8 is exactly 2 times the square root of 2. Why is that true? As it turns out, it is true. And the reason it's true is because, well, the square root of 8, if you write it in simplest form, is 2 times the square root of 2. Okay? And that's exactly what this video is over today, is simplifying square roots. Or actually simplifying, I'm going to say simplifying radicals. Because not just square roots, but cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots and any kind of root, any kind of radical. So, how does one simplify a radical? Well, um, first off, let's show why this is true. Okay? Uh, the square root of 8. Well, I know that square root simply means to the one-half power. I remember that from the last video. And I also know that 8, if I think about the, the uh, prime factors of 8, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, so that means 8 is 2 to the third power. And I still have to keep that to the one-half power. And I also know from my uh, exponent rules the other day that when I have something to a power to another power, that I multiply those exponents. And so 3 times 1 half is going to give me one and a half. So that means this is two to the one and a half power. And one and a half, if you think about it, is one plus a half, right? So this is two to the one plus one half power. Now, what are we doing when we're adding exponents? We're actually multiplying two different things. We're multiplying two to the one times two to the one half. And what is two to the one times two to the one half? It's just two times the square root of two. Voila, 2 times the square root of 2. So we just showed it's true. That's one way to do it. There's actually a much easier way to do it than that. But the much easier way to do it than that uses a little fact that we haven't talked about yet. And that little fact is this, that when you have the square root of the product of two numbers, a times b, that that equals the square root of the first number times the square root of the second number. So in other words, the square root of the product of numbers is the product of the square roots. Okay? We'll prove that in just a second, but let me show you how it works. Uh, that means the square root of 8, I can say, well, shoot, 8 is 4 times 2, right? So it's the square root of 4 times 2, which would make it the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 2 times the square root of 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. So that gets there a lot faster than that got there. So actually, I'd really recommend doing it that way. But first... We have to show why is this thing true? Hmm, okay. Well, let's remember uh, the square root of a times b. That's just a times b to the one half power, right? And uh, I remember from my, uh, from my exponent rules that if you have a product, if your base is actually a product, then you can distribute that exponent to the factors of the product. So that's going to be a to the one-half times b to the one-half, which is simply the square root of a times the square root of b. And now we've proven what we said there, okay? So this is a really nice thing to remember. And actually, we can generalize and go a little further and say, actually, the nth root of a times b, okay? Not just the square root, but any root. The nth root of a times b is the nth root of a times the nth root of b, okay? Sorry about my handwriting. Uh, also, this is another really good thing. Oh, I just crossed it out. It's another really good thing to keep in mind, okay? That the nth root of a times b equals the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Okay, so uh, how can we use this? Well, let's, uh, uh, let's simplify some more square roots. 
let's look at oh let's look at the square root of 48 what is the square root of 48 well let's see 48 really easy way to do this is to look at 48 and say are there any perfect squares that go into 48 well let's see what are my perfect squares there's 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. If you're wondering why I'm getting these numbers, it's 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. So that's where I'm getting these perfect squares from. And as I look at 48, I think, yeah, the largest perfect square that goes into 48 is 16. So I can call this 16 times 3. That means that this is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. What's the square root of 16? It's 4. 4 times the square root of 3. Take a calculator. Take the square root of 48. Now take 4 times the square root of 3. You will see it's exactly the same number. Okay? Now, as I looked at this, what, what if I couldn't tell that 16 was the largest, uh, the largest perfect square to go into 48? What if I didn't get that far? And what if I said, well, uh, I know that 4 goes into 48. Okay, well then I'd say, all right, this is the square root of 4 times, I think it's 12. Okay, and that means this is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 12, which is 2 times the square root of 12. Okay, that's all fine and good, except we're not done yet. 12 is not as small as it can go. 12 is still a multiple of a perfect square. Aha, uh -huh. so this is 2 times the square root of 4 times 3, which is 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is 2 times the square root of 4 is 2, times the square root of 3, and I know, I know what 2 times 2 is, that's 4. 4 times the square root of 3, I get to the same place. It takes me longer, but I still get to the same place. What about the square root of 28? 28, what's 28? It's 4 times 7. It's the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. That's 2 times the square root of 7. Again, take a calculator. Find the square root of 28. Now calculate 2 times the square root of 7. You will see it's exactly the same number. What about the square root of 75? What's that? Well, it's the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. That's 5 times the square root of 3. This is starting to get kind of easy. Uh, what about the square root of uh, 108? Ooh, no, not 18. 108. Okay, that's a little harder. Um, I can tell that's a multiple of 4. Let's just do that. So that's a multiple of, that's 4 times uh, 27. 4 times 27. So that's going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 27, which is 2 times the square root of 27. But I'm sure you're thinking already, hey, square root of 27? Uh-uh. 27 is a multiple of 9 and 9 is a perfect square. So that means I'm going to have 2 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, because 27 equals 9 times 3. And what's the square root of 9? It's 3. And what's 2 times 3? It's 6. So I have 6 times the square root of 3. I could have got here faster if I had said 108. Isn't that 36 times 3? The square root of 36 times the square root of 3, which is 6 times the square root of 3. That's, that's getting there a lot faster, but... Not all of us are going to look at 108 and say, oh, yeah, sure, that's 36 times 3. Uh, it's a little easier to get there, or just a little more obvious to get there this way. Longer, but more obvious. Uh, what about, what about the square root of, oh, I don't know, 96? Uh, let me show you another way. Uh, as I look at 96, I'm going to think, okay, um... I can, I can try to think of some, uh, some perfect squares that go in there, or what I can do is I can say, what are the, what are the, uh, the, the prime factors of 96? Um, I know it's even, so I'm going to say it's 2 times, let's see, 2 times 48, and 48 is 2 times 24, and 24 is 8 times 3, and 8 is 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2. Okay? So what is this? This is... 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 to the 5th power, okay? All right, well, uh, can I find 
a perfect square in 3 times 2 to the 5th? Yes, I can. The perfect square is 2 to the 4th. Okay? Perfect squares are always, uh, always have exponents that are even. Okay? Think about it. Uh, 3 to the 2nd? Well, that's just 3 to the 2nd. Well, let me, let me take 3 to the 4th power. What's, uh, what squared is that? Well, it's 3 squared squared. Okay? What's 5 to the 6th power? That's going to be 5 cubed squared. Okay? We're just doubling that exponent. So anytime you have an even exponent, that means it's something squared. All right. So uh, 90, the square root of 96 is going to be the square root of 3 times 2 to the 5th. So we're going to say that's the square root of 2 to the 4th times 2 times 3. Okay? 2 to the 4th times 2, that's 2 to the 5th. And there's your 3 there. So that's going to be the square root of 2 to the 4 times the square root of 2 times 3. The square root of 2 to the 4th is 2 to the 2nd. And that's times the square root of 6. And 2 to the 2nd is 4. And there we go. Maybe I could have, uh, if, if I had been really sharp at the beginning, I could have said, hey, 96, isn't that just 6 times 16? Yeah, okay, fine. If you can do that, then great. You can see it's the square root of 6 times the square root of 16, so it's going to be the square root of 6 times 4, which is that. Uh, not, not all of us, including me, are going to look at that and immediately say, oh, yeah, sure, it's 6 times 16. Uh, that, takes a, uh, that, that takes an eye that, well... Some of us have and some of us don't. All right? Okay, so let's. So I think we're, we've looked at a lot of uh, 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 simplifications of square roots. Let's look at simplification of a cubed root. Aha! Uh -huh. What if we had the cube root of 96? Ooh, okay. Well, that's going to be the cube root of, what did we say a second ago? It was 2 to the 5th power times 3, right? So what's our largest cubed root that goes into this? It's going to be 2 to the cubed. Sorry, to the cubed. 2 cubed. Okay, so this will be the cubed root of 2 cubed times 2 squared, because 3 plus 2 equals 5, times 3. So that's the cubed root of 2 cubed times the cubed root of 2, uh, two squared times 3. What's the cube root of 2 cubed? 2. Think about it. This means to the 1 third power, and 3 times 1 third is 1. So this is 2. And this, well, we're just going to have to let, uh, leave it alone. It's got to be, uh, it's going to be the cube root of 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. And we just can't take a cube root. 12 is not the, uh, is not the, uh, uh, a multiple of any cube, of any perfect cube. So we just have to leave it like that, and that is the simplified form. Okay? Uh, let's do one more. Actually, let's do one more square root. Let's do the square root of 12.5. <laughs> oh, a decimal. Oh, my God. What do we do? Well, I would say um, let's change that to an imperfect fraction. Let's call it 25 over 2. Okay, 12.5 is 12 and a half, which is 24 times 2 plus 1, 25 over 2, all right? And uh, now, let's, uh, let's take the, uh, we, oh, we don't know this yet, do we? Oh, 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 oh. What you can do is you can say, this is the square root of 25 over the square root of 2. We'll talk about why you can do that in a second, because what we're doing is we're using the fact that the square root of a over b equals the square root of a over the square root of b. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll check that out in just a second. Uh, now, once we have proven that, we'll look at this and we'll say, okay, square root of 25, that's just 5. 5 over the square root of 2. So we seem like we're done, right? Not exactly, because the second thing you have to make sure that you do when you're simplifying a radical is don't leave any radicals in the denominator. This used to be a real problem in the pre-calculator days because you'd have something like this and you'd say, oh, okay, 5 times the square, or 5 divided by the square root of 2, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll, uh, if I want to find a decimal approximation to that, 
I'll just take the square root of 2, which is approximately 1.4142135622, and I'll just divide that into 5. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do that. That's just, oh my god, no, 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 no. Okay? So in the pre-calculator days, we got to, uh, uh, we, we adopted the custom of never leaving uh, irrational numbers in the denominator, and uh, these square roots are irrational numbers. So we have to do something that will uh, rationalize that denominator. And this is what we do. Our answer is 5 divided by square root of 2, right? So what you do is you take that denominator and you multiply times square root of 2 over square root of 2. Now, what's 5 times square root of 2? It's just 5 times the square root of 2. What's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? 2. We just rationalize the denominator. So you can have your answer is 5 times the square root of 2 over 2, or your answer can be uh, 5 halves times the square root of 2, or your answer can be 2.5 times the square root of 2. Any of these answers are perfectly fine. Okay? But we still haven't proven that you can actually do this. So let's do that real fast. Okay, uh, the square root of a over b, that's just a over b to the one-half power, right? If you remember from your, uh, uh, from your exponent rules that when you have a quotient to a power, then that's actually the quotient of the, uh, you, can, you can distribute the exponent to both the numerator and denominator. So this is going to be a to the one-half over b to the one-half which is the square root of a over the square root of b, and we just proved it. We're good. All right? Okay, uh, let's... Uh, what happens when you throw variables in here? Okay? For example, what happens when we have... I'm going to do the square root of 32 times a to the 13th power. Whoa, okay. Well, what can I do here? Um, one thing we can do is we can look at all the, we can look at the, 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 uh, the roots. But actually, 32, I happen to know that 32 is 16 times 2. And, uh, I'm sorry, when I said the roots, I meant the prime factors. Uh, I know that 32 is 16 times 2, and 16 is a perfect square. So I'm going to write this as 32 is... 16 times 2, and a to the 13th, that's a to the 12th times a. Okay? Now, why did I do that? Because a to the 12th has an even exponent, which makes it a perfect square, and it's the largest perfect square that goes into a to the 13th. So this is the square root of 16 times the square root of, I'm just going to put that one first, a to the 12th times the square root of 2 times the square root of a, and what does that give us? Well, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of a to the 12th, that's just a to the 12th to the 1 half. 12 times 1 half is 6. And the square root of 2 times the square root of a is just the square root of 2a. And there is my simplified form of that guy. All right? You want to do another one? Sure, we'll do another one. Let's do... Let's do something weird. Let's do the fourth root of the exact same thing. We're going to do the fourth root of 32 times a to the 13th power. Okay? Uh, again, 16 happens to be 2 to the fourth power. Now, let's say we didn't know that. Okay? So let's say we're going to do uh, the fourth root of, and this time we'll just break things down to uh, uh, their, their factors. 32 is uh, 2 to the 5th power, and that's a to the 13th power, okay? So now what do we do? We want the fourth root. So we want to find the largest perfect fourth inside of uh, uh, these two factors. Well, okay, so that's going to be uh, 2 to the 4th times 2, and a to the 12th, because 12 is a multiple of 4, times, is that right? Yep, sure is times a. Okay? So that's going to be, let me check with this, uh, yes indeed. Alright, so that means this is the fourth root, well the fourth root of 2 to the fourth is just 2. 
And the fourth root of a to the twelfth is, twelve divided by four is, a cubed. And then the fourth root of two, we keep that in there, and a in there, and there's our answer. It's going to be two times a to the third power times the fourth root of two a. Okay, that's that's a, that's a pretty weird one, but that's exactly right. Last one I'm going to give you, and this is going to be a uh, a square root again. I'm going to take the square root of. Let's take the square root of. 27 times x to the 6th over 5. Oh, baby, what do we do here? Well, let's look for perfect squares. 27. 27 is a multiple of 9, okay? So let's call this the square root of 9 times 3 times x to the 6th over 5. Okay, now... Where are our perfect squares? One is right here, and one is right here. Okay? So this is going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 3 times the square root of x to the 6 divided by the square root of 5, which gives us 3. That's the square root of 9. x cubed, that's the square root of x to the 6, times the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. I've got a radical on my denominator. You probably can't tell because my handwriting is so poor, so let me clean it up there. Okay, I've got a radical on my denominator. What do I do? I multiply both numerator and denominator by that denominator. So this is going to be the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 here, and now what do I have? I have 3. Here, let me write it down here. I have... Uh, let me write it up here. Let's see. 3x squared times the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. That's 3x squared times the square root of 15. 3 times 5. Over square root of 5 times square root of 5. Over 5. Got it. Done. Okay? If we wanted to, we could write 3 fifths times x squared times the square root of 15. You can write 0.6x squared times the square root of 15. That's all fine. You can write 0.6 times the square root of 15 times x squared. You can change the order if you want to. Put the variable at the end. Some people prefer putting the variable at the end. Some people pref prefer putting the, uh, uh, the radical at the end. So that way you, you're not confused about what's the radicand and what's the coefficient outside. Um, I, I, there, there's no completely right way there. Okay? All right. That's it for this video. Uh, hope you took notes. See you next time.